Alright, hey everybody. Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday so far. Let's go ahead and get started. So, I was brainstorming today during one of my breaks. And I was thinking that the way that I'm doing actions now might be way more complicated than we actually need. What if, instead of sending an entire action tree to the server, we just sent the selection that the player made to the server, and then, since everyone is supposed to have the same mod, during the, the next phase, which is used when the, um, the game would like sort all the actions, what if the game just generates the action trees and flattens them all in that one step? So then we wouldn't even have to send action trees to the server. We would just send selections at one point and then the finished uh, list of actions on the next phase. Pretty sure I am, and all day I've been trying to think if that actually would cause any problems. One thing I could think of is that if each player had, like if the mod had some kind of randomness to it, then each player would not generate the same actions. But we could solve that by having there be, the server would send um, a random seed every turn that the mods would use. So that would solve that problem so that everybody would generate the same thing. So I can't really think of a downside. And uh, the upside is, of course, we don't have to deal with um, sending all this stuff to and from the server. Um, I guess another downside is I've worked on these action trees for the last couple days and we might end up not actually using it. Um, but <laughs> that's the price you pay when <laughs> you try to program on stream with not a whole lot of planning. So that's why if you're trying to make a big game you should probably do a little more planning than I do here, but it's not that fun to watch, so I try not to put you guys through it. Um, so let's see. So I made a backup of the game. And I'm just going to try to implement that new system. And if something goes wrong, I can just uh, revert back. In fact, why don't I go ahead and make um, a tag and get for it. Um, just a second. I've never done get on stream, so I don't want it to leak anything. So. So I'm just going to generate a tag real quick. So I don't know, how about I call this pre um, action tree re rework. good now. Alright, so now I can easily revert back to this point if something I do tonight we find out won't work. Alright, so a few things will need to change. So actually There's really no, um, like this whole get actions thing, this does not even need to be called right now. Because after the player makes a selection, we would actually just send the information about the selection to the server. So maybe in this part, um, this option needs to have a bit more information so that we can restruct it, uh, reconstruct. 
sequence um, the action from here. So let's um, okay, well, let's think about what would we send to the server? It's basically. Um, Where is that? The oh, it's not in the data class, which I guess I should move it there. If we're going to do it this way. Oh, we yeah, have the ability target option. So we won't send the indicators, obviously, because that's just for graphic. And then we already know that we can't really send this memory, so we need to figure out another way to um, contain this data. So maybe um, we just need really the target position. Oh, I guess this would be target index. Because this could also refer to maybe a monster that we target. Okay. And um, so on the server side. So, uh, what do I call this, I guess? Um, so it's not actually a game action. And why don't I call these turn option? Because I don't really want to call it an, I guess I could call it an action auction, option, but that's <laughs> hard to say. And also, it's not exactly true because an option would generate a list of actions. Um, yeah, so I guess a uh, turn option makes sense. Um, actually, it should be turn option message. Jeanette. Option. Let's call it a turn selection message. Maybe I'll do it that way. All right. So okay. So this can contain multiple classes because. There'd be one selection per player. Um, so turn selection message player. So player index. Um, definitely the monster index. And the ability name. And then any other information. about which option was selected. We could just return an index here because these scripts should return the options in the same order. But then we'd have to call this script again. Which I guess is not a huge deal, but So we have to call the script again once we got the other player's options so that we could figure out what, which one it was chosen. Um, okay, I guess let's just go with that for now. Okay, and then uh, option index. I guess, okay, 
Okay, I'll call this a target. Yeah, I think... I mean, it's a little redundant because we're going to need to call this script again. But this way we won't have to um, store, like, the actual position that... Like, right here. Because um, the game will be able to get that again. Okay, so... Oops. Type the wrong key there. And again, this class is basically just has an array of this. needs to subscribe or implement or what do they call it? Message base. Needs to inherit from message base. Alright, so we're done with that. Okay, so now to be... I'm going to try and leave as much scripts in, um, con in, intact as I can, but some of this stuff won't even be needed anymore. So, um, like this the selection phase. So after we choose the target, we don't have to do a get actions phase anymore. Because once we choose the target index, we have everything we need for this phase. that and then here come on select target complete okay I don't need this message anymore so let's go ahead and comment this stuff out I guess I don't need to worry about it too much because obviously um, I created that tag and get so I can roll back if I need to Okay, and then this is unneeded. Okay, and basically anything dealing with action trees is now obsolete, so cause we're not we don't even need to do an action tree anymore. Or have an action tree anymore. So yeah, conditions, they won't, won't be needed anymore either because there'll just be some script that will um, figure out which actions Because the script that we're going to use in the sorting phase, which will convert all these selections into the actual actions for the game, won't um, have to have a separate condition script because it can actually just do it right at the point it needs to. safely delete these comments because the new way I load XML files works great. Don't need this. Or this. And then the 
organizer is also going to complain to me. Action tree, Lua collar. We don't need any more either. System obsolete. Some of this stuff I think is probably going to throw or not be compilable. Like right here, because the action tree doesn't exist anymore. So let's see what errors I have left. Throw a cynical in there. Okay, yeah, there's a ton of. Okay, warnings about using an obsolete class. Okay, so what. Action tree list. So I guess we need to create um, this ability target option. Okay, so I guess both of these need to move into the actual data class now, which is fine. Or data namespace, I should say. I guess they kind of should have been there originally, but I thought that I could get away with having them in the map namespace since they were only going to be used there. But now it's going to be shuffled around. Okay, so target option. What's it complaining about? Is ambiguous between the data and. Oh, I'm surprised that didn't throw a problem before. I did the prefix, but I guess everywhere I didn't need to. And select the scope. Alright, this has a list of options. Oh wait, I don't... Well, I guess I could do it that way, but this doesn't use the Lua interface, so that works fine. stuff is just using obsolete classes. Okay, so now this would actually return a list of, or it would contain a list of ability targets. This will just have a list of options that different players have chosen. Um, 
should I call this? Um, I guess this will be... So this class will hold the indicators as well as any other extra data about the specific option. You know what, maybe uh, let's just call this an ability target. So you know, yeah, I just moved these, I'm gonna move it back. data class, I'll just have something that's called um, turn target. Is that or it was like selected target, wasn't it? Turn selection message. Oh, and then I had a target index, okay. So this will be turn selection. Oh yeah, I guess it asked me that because I hadn't changed the namespace yet. For some reason, once I do that, it won't automatically rename the class. Okay, and so this will have basically the same information that's in the message. So the player index. Um, monster index. Ability index. And then... Target. And then we'll just have a turn selection list here as well. here and just initialize everything to negative one. Monster index. Negative one. Ability index. Alright. And so now we have... Alright, so here... Okay, we're not going to do a memory. This one won't be needed anymore. Uh, okay. Well, I just thought of a reason why, but um, so I'll leave it there in case. And then, um, so let's see. Oops, I just dropped something. Well, um. Okay, so when somebody chooses a target, yeah, we'll be able to build this turn selection from this option because this other information is in the current selection scope. So we don't really need to add this information to the indicators. Go back to the finalizer. Where is it? Actions collector. This will now be turn selection list. And let's call this selections. Oops. To copy, not paste. Okay, well that makes sense, I guess. So now let's just call it. Selections. Right, then on action tree generated. Okay, so we'll need to rename that to on turn selection generated. Generated. 
and this would again just turn selection. So it basically works the same here, except we just add the selection instead of the tree. Function list and clear that. Okay, so now there's probably more errors from me moving around namespaces again, so let's uh, fix those. Map. Oops, clicked the wrong thing. The doggy's being a bit loud, so. <laughs> Choice finalizer, so it's still okay. This is the netcode part. So we actually spent all this time doing this. It's not needed anymore. Well, that was a fun ex uh, um, challenge, I guess. Um, so I'll just throw a not so implemented. Exception again, and we can um, go back to that. It'll be a lot easier to make this message. Don't need that anymore. Okay, I guess we can still have this action translator, although this class won't need it. Selection list again. Okay. So let's just go one class by class and fix all the stuff. Okay, it's the end of effects. Um, I don't really care about this at this moment. Speaking about end of turn effects. This actually will simplify this phase a whole lot because there might not even be like a uh, action generation phase, it only have the ordering phase. Um, so that's kind of nice. And selection. What does this do? Okay, this is the part that would get the action trees, so this whole class is basically unneeded now, so I'll just mark it as obsolete. Delete it once we're finished with everything. And, uh, alright, it's taking a bit to think right there. Right, so, actions chosen on turn selection generated. Okay, yeah, so this. But this is actually now a turn selection. Um, I guess I'll just change this to selection generated. Because I really need to try and keep like actions option and selection all separate. Okay, so here, the target selected, we already have access to everything we need, so I think I'll just go ahead and generate that um, selection here, it's so simple anyway. Okay, so selection, generated, send, okay, and the player index equals scope dot player. Monster index is scope dot monster ability index equals scope dot ability. Oh, I'm doing it in canceled by accident. Um, this should maybe go right here actually. Is this called any other place? No, so it'll be fine. Oh, hey, Ice Boys, thanks for stopping by. 
Oh, and thanks for following too, I appreciate it. Um, I guess the only thing is I'll need to... Oh, well, no, the scope contains the target, so this is good. Equal scope dot option index. Okay, and then after we get all this information, we can just clear that. Okay, so that's fine. Let it recompile so these warnings will update. Oop. So the action tree message. This yeah, this should be obsolete now. Oh, my title caught your eye. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, I think this. I'm pretty excited about getting to. Um, uh, some more fun parts about this game. Oh, here. So we, um, I guess I'll change this to the selection list. Oh, now we won't have to worry about um, showing a debug for this uh, tree anymore either, so that's nice. Um, let's call this selection list. It. I need to wait for it to recompile. Okay, and it does show up. So if I just add a one here. So a dummy will show up. Okay, so it shows all the information about it. So that's nice. What else do I need to do? Okay, so it's complaining that this is not used. Um, I think I'll just comment all this code out, um, so that way I won't I won't get warnings for it. You want to make your own game someday, but you don't have the skills. Well, yeah, it does take some practice, but I would just encourage you to go um, start learning. That's how I did it. So, actions error checker. Okay, so this is afterwards when we re-download the selections to make sure they're all valid. Um, yeah, I'll just comment yeah, this entire part out because it's not useful anymore. Okay, now we don't need that or this. Uh, we don't really need this right now, but I guess we can keep it. You're learning a little bit using RPG Maker? Oh, I love that program. It's definitely a good way to learn, so I'd recommend it. Okay, assign but not use, that's okay. Yeah, so just getting some other here, and that's just because stuff is a work in progress. Selected actions. Oh, right, this is the class that's going to send stuff to the server, so that's okay. Um, yeah, we don't care about that yet. Selection finalizer. Okay, this is obsolete, so again, I'll just comment all this out. So, um, we won't get warnings about that code. Okay. So I'm just gonna play and let's see what shows up. And then when I click here. Alright, so player zero, monster zero, ability zero, and target index. So that's all correct. So now it wants me to select for this other monster. Okay, when I get to that point, yeah, it's going to throw an error because it's trying to send the message to the server, which we don't support yet. But we can see this other um, 
selection for player number one, which is silver. And then monster number one, which is silver again. And they both use the first ability and it's only target. So good at everything works. So now I just got to try to send a message to the server. So let's close everything. And I'll go ahead and clean this up because we're not going to need pretty much any of this code. Which does make me a little sad because I was kind of proud of it, but that's okay. Right, so let's get rid of all that. And return to net message. Okay, and so this is actually now a turn selection message. This is a lot easier to translate than having to flatten the, an action tree like I was doing before. Okay, so basically, okay, let's um, actually get the um, that selection list and its own variable just for easier use. So let's call this game selections. Is uh, selected actions value. <coughs> Excuse me. And then message players is just a new array, and it has the same size as game selection array inside there. Oh, Steam will have another sale for one, but I don't know why I stopped. Oh, Fire Emblem Fates and anime. Yeah, those are definitely time-consuming, but. Okay, VX Ace. Yeah, I haven't. I have most of my experience with RPG Maker XP, and it was like pretty much the program that got me into game design, so or game development, I guess. Oh, I'm doing pretty good tonight. Um, allergies are acting up a little bit, but what else is new? How are you? Thanks for asking. Alright, so now we just got to create each of these players. So we would just link loop through here. Select we'll create the new object here. actually so simple that I can probably just instantiate everything in line. Uh, but I guess I gotta get the the actual turn selection class here. Game. Selections, selections, I. This will be, I'll rename this to the net player selection. Just to use the same name. Okay, so player index, uh, monster index. The only thing that we have to change at all is the uh, ability index, which we change to a name to send over the network. And to do that, we just have to type database abilities ability index.name, so we got easy. And then the target index is the same. So yeah, that's all good. Oh, you're doing good? Okay. Great to hear. Great to hear. All right, so yeah, now we're pretty much already done. As, a, as I keep on saying before, it was way more complicated, but not so much here. And then message players, i equals the net player selection. Okay. So now we're basically back to where we were yesterday. And we're ready to send this message to the server. Um, yesterday I was surprised that the server wasn't throwing errors because it doesn't know how to recognize that message yet, I don't think. 
but let's see what happens now. Okay, so we got a null reference this time. Oh, that's because... Okay, so it actually yeah, went farther than I thought because here it... Um, choice check. So it submits the choices, and for some reason, even though the server should not accept this message type, it actually does. So I'm curious about that. And then it moves on to the next part, and it's trying to check to make sure that nobody is cheating right here. Um, but we haven't implemented that yet, so that's why we got that error. Um, okay, that's the same thing. What do I really do in game development? Uh, well, I mean, it depends, I guess, specifically what task you want to take on for a specific project, but um, I usually handle the um, game design, which is like designing how I want players to actually play a game, and then um, the programming. Although I've been known to dabble in some art and sound, but. I wouldn't say it's my strengths. Oh, but yeah, you have ideas to make games. But yeah, then I would just uh, um, try and take them in. Uh, if you can't build them an RPG maker, you might. You can also try to make like a card game or a board game, that's how I got started out. Okay, um... Alright, I don't know why I'm testing it again. Alright, so what I need to do is go to the server and see why it's accepting this message. So the play accept actions. I guess I need to rename this class now because it's going to select. Or <coughs> excuse me. Accept um, turn selections now, but I'll worry about that later. Oh. So this class is like a base class for all these um, server classes that accept actions, and it should. Like it tries to serialize the or read the message from the server, but it should be the wrong type, so I would expect for it to um, throw an error. So I'm actually going to log this message. Log. Yeah, this is a remix of the Smash Brothers Melee menu theme, I think. what we get now. So, yeah, it was an actionless message, which is not the type I wanted. So, why does it accept it? I guess it just like tries to convert to an actionless message, which is kind of weird. Have I played Fire Emblem Fates before? I have not played Fates yet. I did play Awakening. Um, probably uh, the ones I spent the most time with were the ones on the GameCube with where Ike came from. Those were my favorites, but Awakening's pretty good too. I'm just uh, surprised it's doing this to me. It seems 
seems like a problem on Unity's side, but... So if I go back here, I'm just going to make sure it's actually sending the message I want it to. Maybe the way Unity does it is it just tries to serialize or reserialize the messages into the class even if that's not how they were initially sent. I never actually tested type mismatches like this, so I wonder how I would check to make sure it's actually good data. Action this message and this is okay, turn selection message, so yeah, it's just that just must be how Unity does it, so I guess that's okay. Um, the server probably doesn't really care because I guess if the messages have bad data, um, when the clients do error checking, they would catch it. Oh, you really got into Fire Emblem because of Brawl? <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. Although, I guess it was more melee for me. So this is now going to have a turn selection message, and I'll rename this to accept selections manager. Selections, and then I guess I should rename this part. Selections. And I'm going to need to update all these, these classes. Um, let's see, in the message cache. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to need to do something like. Oh, I guess it's the same, isn't it? Okay, so this is not actions anymore. Oh, actually, I'm not going to rename it because I want to catch any changes, so let's change this to turn selections, and this will be a turn selections message, and the server, I guess, I don't know, we'll maybe compile all the messages into one, that should be fine. Hate is really fun and Conquest is hard. You have all three versions. Yeah, well, Melee was the um, the big one when I was a teen. I guess it shows how old I am, but but yeah, I did enjoy Brawl a lot too. Um, so how do I want to do this? I think these other messages actually. Yeah, the server doesn't really try to change the messages at all, it just sends them directly from each client. So maybe that's how I'll do it as well. For this. So this would be all turn selections message. And I think I'll just add it to the end. We don't really need another file for it. So these are the messages. And then we have and client IDs. That's fine. Oh, did I spell it wrong? I guess I did. Oh, I just forgot the S. Okay, so... Okay, 
this is gonna need to change, but I'll just leave it now. Okay, so this is actually an all res uh, selections message. probably won't even have this because I don't think we're going to need this phase for the end of turn events under this new system okay, so any problems? Okay, everything looks okay in the server. Right, so let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so yeah, it's the same thing. It got all the way here, but oh, I guess I deleted those debugs, didn't I? But now I should actually be sending the right message. So let's go and do error checking. What kind of code did I learn? Uh, well, it started out with a language called Ruby, like I said, for um, RPG Maker. I don't think v VX uses that. Actually, I'm not sure, but that's what RPG Maker XP used. And then I learned C++ and Java in school. And, but now I use mostly C Sharp, which is what I'm programming in now. And I just kind of taught myself, after you learn enough languages, it is not that difficult to teach yourself new ones. Alright, so this unordered actions. Uh, this. Okay, well, let's actually start with the script that receives the messages from the server. Um, so that should be choice receive server actions. And I guess I need to rename this now. Receive server selections. It's okay. Request turn selections, and then this is the server's response. uses Ruby. Oh, the newest one uses Java, okay. Yeah, I think um, coding is, is pretty fun, well obviously, but it's fun to write all this complicated stuff and then see it come to life. For me, anyway. Okay, and then this is should now be an all turn selections message. Oops. Okay, so what's that complaining about? Oh, it's just saying um, I need to change the type there. Um, okay, I should rename some of these messages. 
So I'll receive. Um, I'll just do that. I'll turn selections message. And then this should be on. I'll turn selections fetched. Oops. Spelled that wrong. Do you have any lip tips on learning coding? Let's see. Well, honestly, I think watching people um, is helpful, but also just jumping in and trying to program something. If you can find a nice tutorial, follow it. Um, and basically, one of the first things I tried to do was make um, like a calculator to learn like input, and then you can try and move on to um, make a simple game like Tetris. But yeah, I basically just jumped right in and tried to program what I could for my RPG Maker game, so that's honestly how I got started. Okay, so everything good here, but I know that anything else that uses this variable is going to complain because their types are mismatched now. So, oh, but this is fine because this is the other class we need to update. Okay, so, but I'm going to play and make sure there's no errors up to that point. Okay, object reference. Okay, that is different, so let's see what that is. Why is it trying to sort? Oh, it's because we deleted that not implemented exception, so it actually goes all the way to the next phase of the game, which I guess is fine. Yeah, so... Okay, yeah, so it submitted the choices, and then we got the back. We get them back here. Um, air check. Okay, yeah, so this is all good. And then it moves on to the ordering phase, but we need to finish up here with the air checking. Just have to wait until you get some money for the full version, full version of RPG Maker. Yeah, that RPG Maker is nice, and I'm sure you'll, that'll help you a lot. This class should be named differently now. This should be the turn selections um, error checker. If you do know some Java, I mean, I did write some games just using Java. That's another option until you can get RPG Maker. Um, so now it's like separated from the rest of the classes. I guess I'll just put choice at the beginning. It's a little redundant choice selections, but just for organization. How long does it take to make a game? Well, I've been working on this for about one and a half months already, so... And, I mean, the big games that you buy usually take, I would say, one to two years minimum. But I don't think we'll take that long. I used to make small little arcade-style games um, one every month, but they weren't that complicated. So it, I guess what I'm trying to say is it really depends on what kind of game you're making. I think this one will take probably a few more months at least. So this, 
unordered actions. Doesn't really make any sense anymore. Let's see, so what did I call the variable here? Okay, this is turn selections. Maybe this one can be all player turn selections. All player turn selections. And we'll change this to a turn selection list. Okay, this will be what the error checker will do is it will take everything we got from the server and then compile it into this one list. Oh my, yeah, it takes a long time, I think people don't realize. Okay, we actually... I'll get this class back, because... Could be some errors. What did I call this? Local error. Oh, I think it's not... It doesn't have any type, actually. It's just... Or no uh, attack. Exception. Okay, so can't really use this code. We need to make a new turn selection list. All selections. It's new. Oops, spelled that wrong. Okay, and so if two players, so I guess every client should only send actions for a unique player. So if two different clients send actions for the same player, that would kind of be an error. Or not kind of, that would be an error. So for i equals zero, i less, or let's do it this way. Client, or I'll just see because it's not actually a client ID. Less than message dot client. Oh, I uh, need to get back from message. So. Received. And let's rename this to message variable. What kind of games do I play? Oh, just about everything. Uh, my favorites are probably uh, like strategy games like Civilization or RPGs like Pokemon or Dragon Age and Fire Emblem, I would say. But I do play all kinds of different games because I try to keep up to date with good game design. What are your favorites? I guess Fire Emblem is one. Let's see. So, turn selection message. This would be client message. I guess we don't really care about the client IDs now that I think about it. And then for uh, int s equals zero s less than client message. I guess it should be p. Plus. So, uh, turn 
collection message player. So if they simply send a message with no selections, I guess that's okay because somebody... Well actually no, if they send a message with no selections that doesn't make sense. But it's okay if we don't get a message from one player. Yeah, so if uh, the... let's see, if client... client message players length... Oh wait, we should check to make sure it's not null. Or client message players length is zero. Throw new play exception. And this, let's just say uh, turn selections. I need to really go through and make better play exceptions, but not for now. We should also make sure that the message itself isn't null. Oh, Pokemon Fire Emblem, some shooters like Left 4 Dead, Mario games, and RPGs, yeah. Um, I have been playing shooters, actually. I've really gotten into Overwatch the last couple months, but I've kind of taken a break right now. Okay, so what else do we need to do here? I guess I just need to add the selection to this list. Selection. Okay, well I can't do it that way because we need to convert an ability name back to an index, which is not as easy as the other way. Oh, you never played it? Well, I would recommend it. It is fun. Normal selection, this will be the game player selection. So we can copy some things over directly, like uh, the player index. Although, yeah, before I do this, I actually need to make sure, like I said, it's not a copy of another player's. right here. Let's make a helper function because this function is getting a little long. All selections. Don't need that. So private void. Oh yeah, I don't need this function anymore. Check duplicate player. Uh, I guess I should return a bool. So we'll give a we'll give it this list and then the new player. So it's simply as simple as looping through here. Selection and all selections. If selection dot player index is new player, then we'll want to return true, which means that there's a duplicate. So if check duplicate player. This means that two different clients are trying to send actions for the same player, so that means that there's some problems somewhere. Do I watch anime if I do what kind? Uh, I haven't watched any in a long time, but I'm a big fan of Studio Ghibli, I think is how you call it, like Totoro. And then I sometimes watch. Uh, like, my brother's really into One Piece, so sometimes I watch stuff with him. So let's see. There, so I just need to throw a new exception. Uh, play ex 
Deception. What are you watching right now? Okay, so now we have this, and let's make another helper function to return an ability index. I guess I don't really have to do it this way. I can just have this throw an exception here if there's a duplicate. That way, I don't have to have a if statement there. Okay, so private int get ability index string ability name. Do I have a reference to the database? No, I don't. takes care of that. And so we need to loop through all abilities to try and find one with the same name. If ability dot name equals ability oh I need double equals. Oh, I have to get the index, of course. So I need to switch from using for each to just a regular old four. Zero i less than database abilities count. All right, so if database abilities i dot name. All right, so I guess I can actually do this in line. So ability index equals get ability index and player selection. Okay, let's just do it that way. I actually do need to convert this to uppercase, but I need to make sure the string is not null. So if string is null or empty, then we'll need to throw an error. Exception, and then let's go ahead and at least reuse the same uh, variable and convert it to upper. Oh, it needs a message. Okay, so and then we know if it actually gets through the whole for loop, then it didn't find a match, so we throw another exception. And then last but not least, I need to add the selection to the all selections list. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I think that's everything. Uh, let's clean this up just a little bit. Add some spaces. Getting back in anime, you're watching Log Horizon. Duolingo to help you in Spanish and Japanese. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'd like to learn um, both those languages too myself. Learning how to draw chibi, that's a fun style. Yeah, I've never been that good at drawing. Uh, the only art I can say I <laughs> have any skill on is maybe uh, uh, pixel art and 3D modeling just from practicing game development. Okay, so I need something. Okay, so instead of checking for error here, let's actually do it here. And then I need to do a try catch. And if there's an error, then we would submit it to the rest of the game. And then it will take care of that for us. But if we check an error and we get all the way through without an exception, we can call this check complete. Okay, so is there anything else I need to do? I guess I could check to make sure there's a selection for every player, but I don't think we have to do that because 
If there's no selection for a player, then we know they're just going to be idle this turn. So that's okay. Oh, you're taking a Spanish class, well, that definitely helps. with this, um, I guess the next step is just to play the game and see how far we get. Let's clear this out. Oh, we're getting errors already. Okay, turn selection is already in use. Alright. I guess um, I changed the type, and I did not check everything. What was it? All player turn selections. So I find all references. Oh, we can see here it's still using action list. That's because this is going to sort the actions, but uh, this is actually going to work a lot differently now. So yeah, I'm just going to, again, throw new not implemented exception. We might not even have this class anymore, because first we have to convert every selection to lists, and then they got to be sorted into order. So we might actually still need the action trees. I don't know, I'll have to think about that, how we'll do that. If you have a passion for what you're learning, you'll do well. Yeah, I definitely agree. Have I been to college? Yep, I did go to college. I got a degree in computer science, which is basically programming. Okay, so... Well, I guess let's see if we can get past that error. How was it? Um, well, I guess it was a pretty good um, experience, but, oh, we got all the way through, okay. Um, I was lucky that I actually had a scholarship, but I know some people, it's just so expensive nowadays, so I don't know if I'd recommend it for everyone, but... Although I do have to say, I'm glad that I graduated because I don't want to have to take any more exams, but I guess that's just part of the experience. Yeah, if you can get a scholarship then, I mean, it's a no-brainer to go because a degree will definitely help. Um, to get a job, but I guess this is something you need to think about. Okay, so, um, why do we, I guess I need to figure out what I want to do next in the stream, because we got all the way through. I don't think we have time to really start on the next part. Well, I guess we can plan it a little. So the ordering... Subphase. So right now all we do is sort, but we're gonna have a couple more phases. I guess it depends on how I w We would need to like really figure out how we'll tr transform from a uh, Turn selections at the start to a list of actions in order for the game to take. And we've got to do it in such a way that like a bunch of mods can work together. So yeah, we might have to do a little bit of planning to next time. <laughs> Uh, 
computer software engineer programmer or computer science they're kind of alike um, at least at my school uh, computer engineer was more hardware software engineer of course was like writing programs and then computer science was more like uh, theoretical and the math side of programming but I mean you kind of all learn how to write programs in each So one way we could do this, and it's kind of like how we did before, is they would create... Action trees, which again have like all the different branching paths each action can take. Which would be a lot simpler now because now we won't have to worry about serializing them. And then the game would figure out all the stats it needs and ask the server for that information and then I guess it would sort which player went first and then it would go through each of the trees and flatten them out and insert them into the list. So that's one way to do it. I'm trying to think if there's a way that I can generate the actions without having to use a tree though because it's kind of complicated. And if we do that then we'll have to have the separate conditions, which I guess is not a huge deal. I did leave all that code in the game, but that's just another step the mods will have to take. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about it a bit, I think. Like tech and you want to do something with it. I think those are definitely good fields. I guess uh, another way to do it would be the game figures out. So if we simplified it and kind of made it so that all the actions happen, uh, like all of a player's actions happen at one time and they can't like be split up then the game, we could skip the tree and the game would just uh, sort which player goes first. And then it would just go down the list and um, figure out the actions for each player. And that way we wouldn't have to do the trees because the game would know what the state, uh, what the game state would be at its turn so it wouldn't have to like have branching paths. Um, so yeah, I guess I just need to think how much power I want to give to the mods. We do have the end of turn effects, so like if, uh, I'm trying to think of a Pokemon move that works like this. But like if some Pokemon had like a, I guess counter, kind of, because it always goes last. Oh, but no, but that would work fine because it would just always be sorted to go last. So maybe that is the way we'll do it. Um, Alright, so step one. Figure out the order. Players. Moves. We'll execute. And then step two. Convert selections into lists of game actions, and then step uh, for player in, convert, or uh, yeah, insert actions into the action list, and then four would be Turn to step two until all players have been uh, calculated. All player actions. And then I guess we're done. So I think this will be how I do it. 
Do I make games for a living or for fun? Uh, both. I'm a game developer professionally, and then I also do, like, uh, just other boring programming to help pay the bills. I guess it's not boring, but non-game related programming. So let's see. I think this will be good. Like I said, the only problem is that since like the player can't separate its actions and say some of the actions happen after a player. But I don't know when that would actually be useful. Because after all this we have the end of turn effects which happen later and they can take into effect anything or they can be used to implement any anything like that. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, um, so I guess I'll spend um, the day thinking about this. What games did I make? Um, I can give you a link to my portfolio. I mean, they're mostly small games. I actually uh, just started trying to make games commercially. So it's timnetatten.itch.io, and those are when I used to make games every month. That this was my project, or these were my projects. I also published a game on, if anybody remembers, the old Xbox 360 indie program. I had something called Befuddled Bears on there. That's about it, though. Uh, my first uh, commercial game should be done in a few months, so I'll definitely talk about that more when the time comes, but right now just working on this stream game. But anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's it for me for tonight. So yeah, I'll think about this, make sure this is how I want to do it. But I'm really glad I figured out, like this idea came to, into my head to just send the selections to the server, it makes everything so much simpler. You know, it looks like we won't need the trees at all, which I'm really glad about. Yeah, it'll make my life easier and also mod authors' lives easier, I think. Yeah, so everybody, um, thanks for coming by, watching, and chatting. We had quite a bit of people tonight, so yeah, I really do appreciate it. Um, I'll be back tomorrow at about 8.30 Eastern, and we'll continue with this, and hopefully actually implement some of these actions into the game. Um, if you miss some of the stream and you want to catch up, I do upload to my YouTube channel in the morning, and you can find it in um, my Twitch channel uh, description below the video. And uh, be sure to follow to be notified when I go live tomorrow, and yeah, you know all that jazz. So thanks again, everybody. Oh, and I'm glad you found my stream too, Ice Boy. It was really nice chatting with you. All right, well, that's all for me for tonight. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye bye.